Just this little thing here is Victory Road Ministries is where I'm at. And I have this subtitle, Believing in God's Miracles Today. And I got a word yesterday to speak on what I'm believing that God wants to use me for. And so that's what I'm going to do today. But for me, to be unafraid to be me is just for everyone. Be unafraid to be you and who Christ calls you to be for whatever it is. So I'll, I'll read this little thing. And the Lord showed me this quite a while back. I mean, it's been in the Bible, just tucked in one of the old Bibles, and I picked it up, the old one that I used to use. And this is what it says to us. It says, be unafraid to be you. And our willingness to be open and to be authentic is fully rooted in what we believe about ourselves. And the only way we will have self-worth is by being certain that our true identity of how God created us rest on how God sees us. He wants to see us as he called us to be. Not to try to be something that we're not. not I can't be that person that I'm not in Christ because I know who I am in Christ. He reveals himself to me on a daily basis. I stay in the word and I study just not to, not to say that I study all the time, but just to build a relationship with him that allows me to see what he has for me, and the same for you as what he has for you in your walk. Now, my walk is believing in God's healing power. And so many times we use words, and, and this is one of the things that God's leading me in in this today, is the words we use. Even in our innocence of heart, we just say little things sometimes that just, you know, it leaves a crack. It opens the door for the enemy to come in and tear down what God tries to build up in your life for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of others that need to hear what the Word says. So, I believe in God's healing power today. I've seen many miracles. I've seen many things happen by the hand of the Lord, by the laying on of hands, and believing in the power of the anointing oil, the same as it were in the Bible when they anointed David. The King David was anointed. It didn't come up and just put a little cross on his forehead. They set him down on a chair and they dumped oil on him by the buckets full. He was drenched in oil. And that was an anointing. That was his anointing to be king. But when they anointed him king, they dumped oil on him by the bucket fulls. And so when God pours his love out to us, he doesn't pour out just little bits and pieces like some of the songs say. He, he just, he loves us. Beyond measure. So, believing that God loves me, that God protects me in all that I say and do, i got to step out and believe in faith, that thing that be not as though it were. And when you go into a place like that, there's a part of people that want to come at you and resist. There'll, there'll be resistance. And, I, I, you know, I can't explain all the things away. I'm nowhere near where I would like to be but I have to settle in and understand that the Spirit of God reveals things to me to share with you that should edify you and give you comfort in the power of God's grace. His grace and mercies are fresh and new every morning. We have Amen. no lamentations. And it's awesome to see how he moves in my life because I have a great expectancy for him to work out the things in me that need change so I can walk that walk and talk the talk. Now, people get healed. Some do, some don't. But there are particular things that we have to understand when we're believing for sickness to flee. We know that in the name of Jesus, the enemy has to flee. He's the one that's the roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. You, this right. is all basic stuff that we hear a lot. But we got to understand that roaring lion standing by, waiting for us to say something. And even in innocence of heart, that can cause a door to crack up where he can get in and settle into your thoughts to deter you from what God's trying to bring you to believe or see or have revealed to you. That's right. According to the word, and I'm going to get to it here shortly, in chapter 3 of Acts is where I'm going to be. Right at the beginning of chapter 3 in the book of Acts, there's powerful things that Peter and John did, said, that made the power of God work, and through them, 
the power of God flew. This particular situation where he went to the temple gate and the lame man lay 40 years. <coughs> they carried him and set him at the temple daily to beg for all. 40 years. And this was after Jesus died. This is when Peter and John knew who they were in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to read a little bit here now just to get you to the place where we can understand that we can't look to God, and this, this might throw you back. Some of the things I say probably don't settle well with some people. But it's not God's job for you to be healed now, you see. He already did the work on the cross. We're not looking back. We're looking ahead. The old saints were looking forward. Now I got that backwards. The old saints were looking forward to the coming of Christ. So they didn't have to deal with the wrath of God. We are not there. We are looking back at what was already done on the cross. Every provision we have was provided on the cross, so we're looking back at what's already been done. So we've got to understand when we're healing, we can't add God to spirit. They cannot intervene in the affairs of men. He did it once through Jesus. He brought the physical body. He taught the apostles how to operate and how we're to re represent Jesus on this earth today as we walk out our works. That's just what we have to do. We have to settle into the place to know that when God's already ordained something through Jesus to be done for us, we can't ask God to heal us today. He's already healed us. The scripture tells us in 2 Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were healed. Now why did they use the word were? It's past tense. We're looking back at the cross of what's already been provided for us to be healed. So we have to understand that. We can't say, oh God, or if it's God's will. A lot of people want to step off in that place where they say, well, if it's God's will, he'll heal. Let me tell you something today, and I want everybody here to hear this that's here. It is God's will for you to be well. Amen. It's not Amen. God's will for you to be sick and go through all these things that we deal with. That's right. You know, it's not his will for that. His will is that none should perish. Mm. Amen. God's will is that none should perish, that all should come to repentance for the remission of sin. Amen. Sin, that word, goes into salvation. It goes into healed. When you take it back into the Hebrew, sozo, that word, I use it often for this. But that's why Jesus said in other places, your sins are forgiven you. And he got up and walked. Your sins are forgiven you. Amen. That's saved, healed, forgiven. All these things are wrapped up in the atonement of Christ on the cross. So we've got to understand, God's already provided the way. So if he's already provided the way, we can't ask him to do again something he's already provided. We have to learn how to receive it. Amen. So receiving is really, really not a hard thing to do. We receive it by believing in what the cross has provided for us in our physical bodies today. Amen. So I'm going to go into Acts chapter 3. And I want you to really listen to what Peter and John were doing here. It says, now Peter and John went together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple. The first thing this guy was doing was asking. There's times we don't even ask. But ask not, receive not. So we're going to go on to this and say, who seen, and he asked for alms to those who entered the temple, who seen Peter and John about to go in the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Now this is really important that you understand. Peter and John said, look at us. Now there's other things we've got to watch when we say look at us. What they were trying to do was show us a picture that they didn't ask God nothing in the midst of this. They already knew what was provided on the cross. They already knew what they had. They had the power of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, dwelling on the inside of them. They didn't pray to God. They didn't ask God. They said, look at us. Look on us. So he says that. And fixing his eyes on him, he said with Peter, look at us. 
So he gave them his attention. This man gave them his attention because he was expecting alms. But expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver, and you've got to understand, this is scriptures that we've been through and read and heard. Silver and gold have I not, but what I do have, I give to you. What did they have? They had the power of the Holy Spirit living on the side of them, and they knew who they were. They knew they had that power, that raising of the dead power living on the inside of them that caused them to know, look, I don't have to ask to God. God provided me a way. I take a hold of that. I believe it in my heart, and I release it into people with the power of God that moves when people are able to receive what he's already provided. You have to get to the place where you can receive what was provided on the cross. The blood was spilled out. And it meant for all the things we have need of. And he says, Peter, <laughs> then Peter said, silver and gold have I not. I do not have what it says, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. I'm going to stop there too because Peter and John, knowing who they were, <coughs> their faith, reached down and took the man by the hand and began to pull him up in faith, believing that when they got him up, that he was going to do what? Wow. Walking and leaping and praising the Lord with them into the temple, into the place where they were going to preach the word or whatever they were going to do. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately, not two minutes, not five seconds, immediately, Amen. immediately, his feet and ankle bones were rece had received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. <laughs> That is so important to understand that Peter and John knew who they were in Christ. Amen. I can't say it enough to understand that I do know who I am in Christ. I know what he's called me to do. And I'm saying to you, I've seen many, many occasions where the laying on of hands have taken people to a place that they thought they not, you know, and i got to say this, I've had better encounters with unbelievers receiving healing than I have with believers. And we say, why is that? What is it? It's not that you don't have faith, but do you have faith to believe it can happen to you? I have faith that it can happen to everyone sitting here. But there's things we got to know and understand before we just take God's word and exit out as if it's not God's will. You know, it is God's will. And I say, it's kind of a chicken way out when we say, well, you know, it's God's will or in God's timing. God's timing is dead perfect when he wants you well. And I say to you, if God wants you to be sick, then why would he say, seek the kingdom first and all these things will be added to you? He cannot add the desires to your heart or you won't enjoy them if you're broke down. Now, there are things that come to us. That we have no control over to get that. None of the sickness and disease that we deal with this day and age, we don't have control over that. There's an infliction from the fall that started in the garden, and then things happen. There are things that come at us that are just, we can't understand, but we have to do this. We do have to understand that God wants us well. He doesn't want us suffering. He didn't send us to this earth to suffer. He brought us here so that we can have life in Christ. And so we have life in Christ. He is the author of life. Oh, oh man. He's the author of life. The beginning of all things that Christ had was life. Everything that was brought to, to this earth in creation has life. It, and it's the power of our word. See, everything in this whole creation... God spoke it into existence by using words. And so God can't go against the things that he spoke. Or this world would just 
disintegrate. God's not a God that should lie. And if he was, <coughs> if everybody here would, in this whole universe would poof, it would come apart. It's held together by the integrity, to integrity of his word. Amen. When he right. spoke things into existence, he used words, creative words. Yes. And that's what we need to do. We need to understand when we're talking to our brothers in Christ or sisters or others that have need for God's power to work in their life, it's creative words that cause things to come to pass. It's not destructive things. God's word's right. omnipotent, meaning powerful and true. Amen. And our words can be potent, poison to one another. Just saying things that just don't need to come out of our mouth that hinder the work of God in our life because God doesn't move but through the spirit of Jesus Christ after he ascended, left the spirit. That's what's inside of us. That's the raising of the dead power of Jesus Christ living on the inside of us. That we have to acknowledge that the power is there for us to use. God didn't leave us this in this world without power to come against the enemy. Amen. It's like that he would put a little baby in a back of a, a fenced-in yard with a lion and think that that lion is not going to eat that child. Who would do that? God didn't do that to us either. He didn't corral us up and put us in a place where the enemy can just come in and take over. Right. You'll have things that happen naturally. You'll have attacks of the enemy to try to take you out of God's work. And, you know, just natural things that happen. If you're out like I was cutting wood, and I'm not being cautious, and a chainsaw slips and bang my leg, it's not the devil. I made a boo-boo. And I had things that come at me, but I don't have to suffer those things and bleed out and die because of it. Because we had the power of God living in the inside of us. We, we just do what we got to do. If I had to, I'd have yanked my belt off and tied a tourniquet. We know to do those things. Right. But there are natural things, too, that we deal with in this physical world. We can't look at everything like there's a devil in every doorknob you touch. Because then you're giving him credit where credit's not due. You can't acknowledge him in anything. Put him to the place where he needs to be. He's under your feet and behind you. So let's understand that God's power is alive and well in us. Amen. And if you're born again, the Spirit's inside of you. The Bible says that. I don't say it, but I know it because I see it reveal itself and manifest itself by the way I go about believing for God's order of things according to what the Word says. It's powerful to know that you have the power of God through His Son that died on that cross inside of you that can bring you out of any sorrowful situation, any pain, any sickness on this earth. All we have to do is understand how to receive it. And you know, it's hard to speak of these things because people sometimes out there in the world don't <coughs> want to take the responsibility that it takes to be that that God calls us to be. He flows through us in power. And that's what we got to look at. We have to look at the sovereignty of God, but not in the way that the world looks at the sovereignty of God. They'll say, well, sovereignty in the dictionary is highest ranking in authority and power. That's what God is. There is no king above. He's king above kings, Lord above Lord. There is no other name but by the name of Jesus where you must be saved. It doesn't say sovereignty is how the Bible is brought to people. Just saying churches, and it's not ours, I guarantee you that, but there are churches who use sovereignty as another way out of taking responsibility for what we have in Christ. Sovereignty of God doesn't control you. It doesn't control your situations. It doesn't control all these things that we want it to control is a way out not to take the responsibility on ourselves for what God has living on the inside of us. If it's sovereignty that controls it, then why aren't we all healed? If it's sovereignty that controls it, then why aren't we all born again? We all have a free will to make choices. And your free will is granted to you by God. Because he doesn't want to control you to go to him. 
He wants your heart to receive him and then build relationship and go to him. Amen. Go to the Father who is at the hand. He is the one that we have to look at when we believe for things that we don't see. And so then we understand the words are creative words. They have to be spoken in a tone that's creative and not destructive. Because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth's going to speak. That's what the Bible says. Fill your heart with the abundance and the knowledge of the Word of God, knowing that the power of the Spirit of God is living on the inside of you. And use creative words so that that Spirit can be released into people, whether it's something they need to hear, or they need help in something in their life, or prayer for healing, or whatever it is. Creative words or a part of what we need to understand that manifests the power of God in your life today. Amen. It's not something that just goes on in a foreign country. And I'll tell you the reason why it does go on in a foreign country a lot. And we get a lot of healing in those areas in foreign countries because they are not spoiled rotten. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they are willing to receive what is heard. So by the word spoken... We have to be willing to receive it and receive what God's Word says. Amen. He right. sent Jesus on this earth to walk it out, to show you. Second Peter said, you know what I say in 2.24 says, by his stripes you were healed. You know? First we've got to understand that the book of James in chapter 4 verse 7 tells you this. Submit yourself unto the Lord, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That word resist means to actively fight against. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, in these end times, the way things are in this world, if you're not actively fighting against the enemy, he's going to come in and steal your joy. That's he's right. going to come in and take everything that God has to offer in blessing from you. And you're going to allow him to come into your thoughts and one thing to another, and the next thing you know, here we are. We're in a place where we say, what is going on? Why is the enemy, you know... Resist him and he'll flee. That's right. Resist him and he'll flee. Amen. Actively fight against the works of the one Satan who is coming at you to seek, kill, and destroy. I don't, I, for lack of better words, I say it because it's true. I walk in divine health because I do not allow thoughts of the enemy to come into me to take away what God has given me in my physical body. He wants us well. There are things that restrict us. There are things that go on in the fallen world, just like animals. They were herbivores. They're not now. They eat each other. That's the fall. The lion and the lamb, that don't work now, but it was meant to be a picture of God's love and that peace that the lion can lay with the lamb as a metaphor, not what the Bible te teaches about the lion and the lamb, but you see what I mean. That lamb couldn't walk in front of that lion now because of the fall. He would eat it. He would devour it. It's like the enemy wants to come at us and devour it. He wants to come to devour it. So we've got to understand that even if we're in a place that we speak the word of God, just like Peter and John, they kept talking about Jesus. All the religious leaders come at them. Tell them, don't be talking and teaching in that name. Don't be teaching that doctrine to my people. But you know what? They did it anyway. That's right. And they wound up in jail. Uh -huh. And what happened? An angel of the Lord opened them up and let them live. That the guards were there. They didn't even know they were there. They're gone. You know, let that that God puts into your heart Settle in and resonate in your spirit, man, so you can be gone from the things that we don't need to have in our life. We yeah. need to understand that. <coughs> really, it's important to receive what God's provided on the cross through His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the one who brings us to the place where we can have that peace, that joy, the faith. One of my things I was talking about was in this, this Keller's. I'll, I'll just brief through them real quick. Black represents the suffering and the death on the cross of our Lord Jesus. And now, it's not that we look at, <laughs> oh my, it's not that we look at ourselves that we suffer for anything we say for Jesus, 
But we look at the cross for what he suffered for us. It's important to understand that you're going to have resistance. It's going to be, when you step out into a place where most people won't, there's going to be resistance come at you. That's right. So we got to understand that. we got to understand to stand firm and not be shaken. Amen. Don't right. be shaken. Stand firm. Believe for that thing that God has for you and walk in it. Move in it. Believe for the healing power of God to work in your life. And then I had a, another color, yellow. Yellow is the most significant color in the Bible, meaning faith, <coughs> the glory of God, the anointing, and the joy that comes from God. That's awesome to know that our joy should come from God, and nothing could, sh nothing should shake that. Nothing should take away their joys. That's right. I, I could stand here and pout and moan and groan and belly ache about the things that are going on in my life, but I choose not to. Amen. So make a choice not to allow those things to move you into a place where your joy is stricken by an enemy thought that's not good for any one of us. None of us deserve it. We're all godly people, or we wouldn't be here. Right. We have something going on in our lives that's drawing us to hear God's word. And it's important to understand that. So yellow, I had a little footnote here. So when we begin to understand and seek out the benefits of the cross, first we must seek out the atonement of Christ on the cross, believe the benefits of the bloodshed on the cross in all season times of your life. Don't just pick and choose when you think it's all right to have a little this and a little that with God. Or when you're all happy, when you get into those places, man, that's where we really need to seek, seek God with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our might. You know, there are the times when we really need to lean into them. And unfortunately, I see a lot of people fall apart at the hinges when things don't go well. When If they would just seek God in the fullness of Christ in it, they would benefit greatly for it. They would benefit by that because the power of God's living inside of you. All you have to do is use creative words to speak into existence of things that cause our life to settle in peace, know God is there, and that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Stand on the cross, believe in the benefits, and understand what the benefits are. It's important to know that. Green represents growth in the Lord. And you can go to Psalms 1-3. There's scriptures to that, but I won't take you through those. I'll just give you the, the gist of it. But growth in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. That's what green represents. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He, even when you're in a place of non-comfort, he doesn't lay you down in the woods with crunchy leaves and sticks that can jag you and stab you, you know. We're hunters. We understand that. We sit in the ground a lot or in a tree. But he lies us down in the green pasture where there's peace and growth. Everything grows green that we know of. Trees, all these things, growth in Christ. Are you growing in him? You know, grow in the Lord. Learn to walk in his ways. Believe for that. And I can't stress this enough. Believe in that thing to be not as though it were. That's faith. Seeing not but believing for faith goes into that. Gold. Let me read my little green note there. Are you growing in the Lord? Is your relationship with him growing? If not, maybe you're living like the old man, that things have not passed away. Are you seeing his face, and do you truly have a heart for God? Are we seeing him in our daily life? There are those that do. There are those that are really strong in the Lord. And I, you know, I try to be as strong as I can be in my own strength, but I gotta call out on the strength of the Lord to get me through things, or my joy will be shot. I won't I won't be growing if I don't leave the old man behind me and move on and believe for that thing that God has for me is stronger than anything the enemy can come at me with because his strength is the one that put him in his place. It's God's strength we need to lean on Amen. in times of trouble. Gold. Gold represents the brightness of the day. He's the bright morning sun. He's the rose of Sharon. It's awesome how God works. So for their gold, are your days brighter? Or do they still seem dim with doom and gloom? 
Look up into the heavens and know he's God. Rejoice in the Lord always and look at him who gave us the spirit of peace, love, and a sound mind. That peace, love, and a sound mind only comes from God our Father. The other thoughts that you have are all demonic in origin. There are spirits of influence that come into our heart and our thoughts that cause us to be outside of God's will for things we say. And when you leave a crack open, it's like, <clears throat> give an inch, take a mile. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to strip you of all the things that you think of that are good for the Lord to work in our life and tell you that you're not worth his time. Just like some of the songs were saying, you know. He's there always. He's never going to leave you. But you have to lean in on him and get your peace and your understanding from the word of God so that we can settle into that place of joy, happiness, and just glory God in it. No matter what we're dealing with, it doesn't matter what we're going through. How are you going to handle what you're going through is the question I have. It's amen or oh me, you know, or doubt and do without. You can doubt and do without. Doubt and fear cause the enemy to come in and just wreak havoc on you. And he does. He will. He's waiting for the opportunity. So let's choose creative words that help us rather than just spit out little words that don't do us anything good. I don't know how else to say it, but I know that God shows us this. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Acts 3.19 Come into a place where you can be refreshed in the Lord daily. Ask the Lord to give you fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a filling of the Spirit that you all have when you're born again. But a fresh infilling is calling out for God's Spirit to work and resonate in your thoughts so it can be released. We need to release it by the words we speak. And they have to be constructive words, not critical words. It causes us to fall into a place where God's moving power can operate. I say that, and they say, well, God can do what he wants when he wants, and he can. But there are specific orders of things that God's given us power over, and he will not intervene in that because you have to take the responsibility, step up and have that power, and release it to your own body, to somebody else, or anything that you can do to edify somebody rather than speaking words that bring you down to a place where you just don't feel right. I don't feel right about some of the things I used to say, but I've learned one thing. I've learned to take the order of the words I speak and make creative words. Constructive criticism can be okay. I receive that, but I will not receive words that bring me to a place where I know that it's not God's order of things to take in what somebody else says and be not that what God called me to be. I am not afraid to be myself. Red represents the color of blood, and Christ, death on the cross. It also represents the fire as in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's red, the bloodshed. If we can't think of anything else, think about what the benefits are of the bloodshed on the cross. And understand that God's healing power is released in that, the same as it is for forgiveness of sin, prosperity, and all those things. The bloodshed released all that we have need for. All that we have need for. So on the back side of red, you understand the atonement of the blood was shed. Do you comprehend the Holy Spirit of fire that was left to comfort you as a part of God's head three in one? The Holy Spirit is where we hear our voice from God. And we have to know that he's there. We have to know that we can find comfort in all that he has for us by building relationship with him in the word of God and not standing by just settling for whatever comes your way. You can't do that. we got to stand and fight the good fight and believe for God's work to be done in our life so that we can prosper in this life. You know, it's not hard to understand that, but it's hard to speak of things. There are people that have situations they deal with. 
that just doesn't seem right. I can't control it. I don't know why things are the way they are sometimes. I know it frustrates me, but I know it's the work of the enemy, and we're just working to learn how to combat those things. And I can tell you this, you may carry things on this earth, and they can be used as an example, because God turns everything around for the good, but you know one thing, when we get to heaven, all those things are gone. You're in your state of spirit, where everything is made perfect. Just keep praying this prayer. Understand that God said it. He wants it to be the same on this earth as it is in heaven. He wouldn't have said, if you run out of prayer, <coughs> pray this prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So just keep in mind what we struggle with, what doesn't seem to want to leave us, because we're not all educated in the way that we need to bring things to pass the way we want to see it, your body is going to be made whole in spirit life, and all those things are gone. You're made whole. In other words, you're healed. No matter how you look at it, no matter what we go through, when the time comes of our passing, if we suffer things on this earth, you're going to be made whole and healed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That's the bottom line. We don't have to suffer, and we don't have to go walking into heaven half drug out, thinking, thank God we finally made it. No, we just have to walk this earth and believe that thing to be not as though it were. Start thinking in your thoughts and imagine everything that should be. Picture him riding a bike. Do these things. All those things help you with your hope. When you release your faith, your hope, and your love for God, it will intervene in your thoughts through the power of the Holy Spirit and guide you to the place you need to be and guide you in your speech to help you to understand what his will is. And his will is for us to be well. Amen. Find ourselves in the wellness of Christ. Find yourself through the power of the Spirit that's supposed to be speaking through us. Allow that to be a part of our life. Let it guide us and direct us in our path. Let it be the lamp into your feet and the light into your path. Faith is the substance of things not seen, the evidence of things hoped for. So you have to attach your hope to your faith and the Bible talks about imagination. I may have said this before here, but imagine those things. Imagine those things. You know, if you're feeling bad, what do you do in your normal day when you get out of bed? Put those thoughts in your head and see it in your mind's eye and believe for God to move when you ask. Ask not, receive not. We've all heard that. Since I was a kid, I've heard that. But we're not asking sometimes. We're just taking on what comes and walking around in it like we can't do nothing about it. And we can do something about it. We can trust in the Lord always and believe for God's power to move. Have an expectation for God's power to move in your life so that it can be that we are light. Others are going to see that. And they're going to want to come. They're going to, going to, they want to be around you. They're not going to want to be around you if you're that sour grape. You know? The one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. That's just the saying from an old song when I was a kid. You know? But it's a metaphor to say, look, this can be good or evil. That's all there is. There's gray? No. See, God says don't be on the fence with all things, with all the things you believe for. Be of God or be influenced otherwise by that roaring lion who's seeking who he may destroy. And I guarantee you, if you stand on the scripture in James 4, 7 and resist him, he has to flee. He 
has to flee. He'll go find someone weaker. Then when that's come, you got to pray for them too. You got to pray for the ones that are weak in spirit. But they have to be taught. <coughs> the senses don't teach people how to understand that God's power is alive and well, where we can be well. They they dodge it like a bullet because of the responsibility in saying those things. You're going to have stuff come at you. I mean, I'm not feeling it here. But I do when I go out and minister and do other things and talk to other people. And so, I believe in God's power. Amen. I've seen it work in my sons, both of my sons. You know, friends and family members were just stricken with sickness. And he moves in a way that I can't understand. See, if I understood it all, it would be easier to go about the works of God in that area. But I don't understand it all. I know that he gives me holy unction to move on a person when things are going on. And so just, just understand that he's alive and well and he wants us to be well. He doesn't want us not to be well. See, God's wrath doesn't come at us anymore. Chastens you if you're a son or a daughter of God. But Romans 5 9, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken, you can check me on that. We're free from the wrath of God. Because if we had the wrath of God coming on, you know what? We wouldn't stand the chance. He would be taking care of business, just like he did in the old saints' day. Thank God for Jesus and the cross, amen. amen. Because we have amen. a new place that we can live where we don't have to deal with the, the repentance issues the way they did then. Now it's repent, turn your thoughts. I'm asking you to repent of your thinking and change your mind about how you think God works in healing power. It's imperative to know that. You have to repent. Change your way of thinking. If anything that the Lord brings to you through word means anything, take this for sure. Know that God wants you well and try to walk in that divine order of health. There's people that I know that are 90 years old that just work and have no physical body ailments at all. That man right there, I just heard a story about Mr. Marshall, senior. <laughs> He'll go out and knock down a track of trimmer while the guy's dragging can't even keep up to him. <laughs> you know? And it just wears people out. He's strong-willed. You know? And he's he's got a he's got a Something going on there where God's watching over him to give him the strength he needs to do what he likes to do. Same for all of us. You know, let's just believe for God to move so that we can have peace in our life and share it with others. Please understand, I'm not critical. I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. I just know that I am no longer going to be afraid to be who I am. Amen. I am unafraid to be me. And I encourage you, if the Lord's speaking to you, to do things, do them. Don't be afraid to be who you are in Christ. Learn how to be Him and let Him work in you. Learn how to be what God calls us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm happy for this, that you hear the Word and understand we can be made well. I do that testimony for the day. And Dwayne does have a spot there that I forgot about that he wants to say something. Stand up and tell them. Dwayne. 16 so. years ago today, I was in an old truck accident. Here, turn around. Turn around. And, uh, I don't remember much of it, but I was that nurse for like three and a half months. I had to learn how to read, walk, talk, and everything. <clears throat> and still this day, I'm not perfect. But I never ever used back to work. But the good Lord, he blessed me. I remember going through therapy. It was I hated it because it was a lot of pain. You know, because I had to do everything. I couldn't walk by myself. I'd be in a walker. Then um, I talked and I had to go for speech therapist and everything. But <clears throat> the good Lord blessed me. And I'm walking, you know, with ain't no help. And I'm talking, you know, pretty decent. There are some words I can't spit out. Denise and them always makes fun of me. But I say, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. But other than that, I'm <clears throat> doing pretty good. I mean, he's been with me and I bless him for that. Like I said, the song we played there. It was it, um. His healing power is like second there, and it's the truth. And I thank you for all the prayers and everyone who have helped me there because 
there for the longest time. I didn't have any money coming in. They not me work for school, but I had nothing. And I had two little kids at the time. It was for local churches and business, even people. <clears throat> just sending something got me through because it took well, about eight months for anything to win. And I was going to Hershey two days a week, physical, physical therapy two days a week, and anything. But um, you don't realize what kind of people is in this community, and it's, it's a blessing. And that's why I try to give as much as I can. So that, you know, we're in a nice community, and God blesses all of us. That's all I have. Thank you. I want you to depend more on God. 